Hey guys, so let's talk about my February makeup fails and very few favorites. Let's start with the favorites because I only have three. Number one favorite, I don't even know where it is anymore. It always like hops around to the bathroom, to the living room, and this is why I need like five of them. Let me go find it. The Lip Softy from Tower 28. I already spoke so much about this in my last video, way too long. And no joke, I cut out like five minutes of footage. So I don't know if I want to keep talking about it because I feel like I already pushed it so much in my last video. So I think I'm just gonna bring up what I said in my last video that I didn't post. And it was me comparing the Tower 28 Lip Softy to their Juice Bomb Tinted Lip Balm because I've had this for about three years now. And when I got this, I was like, okay, what's the big difference? Why or why not do you need both? So these are both $16. I feel like you get the most money out of this one because this is virgin. It's so thick, it's more like a mask and you can keep it on your lips way longer than this, which is more gloss balm consistency. Price-wise, you will have this for way longer. I even chopped it up into a plastic case. So when I travel, I bring this with me and like look, there's still so much left in here. I feel like this will definitely outlive the Tower 28, especially again, since I've had this for so many years and didn't finish it, but I'm not using this every day like I am with this. When I sleep with this, I wake up with no crust. When I sleep with this, there is still a slight crust, but it's not like a hard, thick crust, like where you really wanna peel it off. Like it's just kind of there, but your lips are still really moisturized. This one feels better though when you rub your lips together because it's thicker. So when I do have a bad crust and I use this, like it hurts rubbing my lips together because rubbing your dry, crusty lips together does not feel good and this is so thin. So you feel that texture versus this where it's thick enough where you don't. Since it's not watery, I can't, slide my lips together as much with this. So with this, she stays on longer. One, because I'm not rubbing my lips together as much as I am with this, and two, because she's thicker. My lips feel more moisturized. This one makes my lips feel really juicy. This one doesn't. I feel like this is more for healing and taking care of the dryness. And it's so weird because it feels like the fat inside my lips is more hydrated. Like it makes my lips create the fat. Oh my gosh, that sounds so weird, but that's what it feels like. So I feel like what I'm gonna do now because it's gonna get expensive with how much I use this, I think I'll use this to fix the crust problem. I'll wait till the crust goes and then I'll put this on when I don't have a crust. Cause like I said, this doesn't really do anything for the crust. It's more moisturizing. Take out the crust, moisturize the crap out of your lips. Out of all my lip products I've tried, this is the only one that makes my lips feel hydrated and like bouncy. So yeah, they're so different from each other, but they both work. That's what I cut out from my last video because I already talked about her so much, I didn't want to add on the comparison. But if you want to hear more about her in detail, then go watch my last video because I talked about this way too much. But this was definitely my number one obsession for February. Okay, second favorite for February is this Rare Beauty blush brush. So I raved about her when I got it and I was talking about how I liked it because she fits so perfectly right here and I do not like her at all for blush. I feel like she's way too thick. Like, look at that. That's already covering so much of my face. I do not like her at all for a blush brush. But I've been so obsessed with her this month because I've been trying out that technique. I will put it here again, where the makeup artist said in Korea that instead of bronzing or contouring here, they just bring the bronzer and contour in one vertical line. So I've been doing that lately. I haven't been putting any contour right here. And this has been perfect. I've been loving contour sticks now because of that technique. This is the best brush because I can just work it into my hairline and over here into my ear. And like I said, this is so like satisfying working it down here, like just pulling it down. So yeah, if I didn't have this, I don't know what brush I would use for that technique because I got this brush and I feel like it's perfect for that angle one. The shape doesn't work as well to do this all around contour. This one's more completely flat even though there's a slight angle to it. But this one, there's different heights here and there. And it just, it, I'm just saying it works perfectly for that technique, for that contour technique. All I've been using lately is bronzer contour sticks. Just doing my contour now is 10 times easier because of that video, because of just doing that one line versus here and then trying to be meticulous. Cause I feel like when you do the contour, you have to be very careful. You don't want to put too much down here. You want to go up, but then you don't want it too much here. Again, let me put up that video for a quick second here. So you know what I'm talking about. I'll put down her Instagram below so you can find that video. But yeah, here it is. The way a lot of 
Korean makeup artist contour the face is actually vertically down the side like this rather than cupping that cheekbone because when you cup that cheekbone it actually makes this protrude a lot more I've been loving that technique lately okay so let's go in with my third favorite for February and that is the KVD blush balm duo again just watch my last video, you'll see how obsessed I am with this. Even though color is usually what attracts me to a blush, these aren't my favorite colors. But the fact that I love it so much, even though these aren't my favorite colors, I feel like means something because the formula is so easy to blend. It's kind of blurring. My favorite blush brush to use is the KVD number 25 brush and it fits so perfectly. I love that there's two shades to choose from. I love that it looks good even when I blend it out with my beauty blender. Cause like I said in my last video, usually when I try to blend out blush with a beauty blender, it makes it more patchy or it picks up too much of the blush, but no, she works really good with the beauty blender, with my favorite blush brush. She has definitely been my favorite blush for February. I really hope they bring out more shades, especially peaches, because I feel like I would use up that product so much if they had a peach one. If you have a hard time working with cream blushes like I do, then definitely try her out. So let's move on to the failures of February. When I'm talking about these failures, they are like, it didn't work that good, like it was okay, you know, maybe you can try it out and see how it works for you. No, this is me saying do not buy them. So this is not a light like, oh, I just didn't like them. Same with my favorites, it's not a like, Oh, they were cute. I like them for this month. No, I'm obsessed with those three. I'm not taking this favorites and fail video lightly. I do not like these fails. So let's get into it. Okay, so these first fails are eyeshadow sticks. The first one from Kaja Beauty's Wink Dazzle Collection. You can watch my video. I tested all six shades out. There was enough negativity in that video. So if you want to see more about it, you can go there. But summarizing that video, I've never had an eyeshadow stick crease on me that quickly, like while I'm applying it, none of the colors showed up well. Unless you're very pale, it'll show up, but on me, like they didn't show up. The only color I liked was the brown one, and I was trying so hard in my mind to be like, no, this one isn't gonna crease like the others. It did. I mean, I said it in my video. I didn't want it to. So even if you have the skin tone for these to show up, how the glitter works, how the eyeshadow works, like just know. I got three of these from the Kaja website directly and then I got three from Sephora. All of them worked the same way and it was so bad that when I asked to make a return and they said, oh, we'll give you store credit, I wanted them to tell me, hey, send it back to us. That's how much I didn't like these. Like, I didn't want to keep them at all. I wanted to be like, can you guys take these back? Because I know I'm never going to use them again. There's a group, I'm sure every city has a group like this in San Diego, like stuff you're giving away for free. And even for that group, I don't want to put these eyeshadow sticks because I don't want to give someone these eyeshadow sticks. I wouldn't recommend these even if I'm giving them for free. Number one of my fails for February. Second one is another eyeshadow stick. I mentioned in my yearly favorites that my Julep Beauty eyeshadow stick I fell so much in love with, I wanted to test out some more. Hence this and then hence this e.l.f. no budge shadow stick. Oh, this, this is more horrible than this. This one does not show up at all. It feels so tuggy. Like when you put it on your lids, you have to really pull. It's so ugly even when you swatch it. I was like, okay, maybe this one, this shade, champagne crystal sucks. I went and got like this rose gold shade. And I was like, nope, it's a formula. It's not this one shade. I immediately returned it to Ulta. I filmed that eyeshadow stick and drawing it on my eyes. And I was like rubbing it all the way up here and you could not see anything. I just kept dragging it and rubbing it and like no product was coming out. I would not recommend these at all, period. There's no reason, there's no use for this. Another big like, do not touch these. Okay, next on my do not touch these, there are far better options for you, is the Rare Beauty Foundation. Foundation's hard because so many people can hate a foundation and then the other half really love it. So she is patchy AF. I have never had that problem with any of my other foundations. I will put up every single foundation I've used right here. I'll put them up. I've never had this problem with any of them. I've honestly never really had any problems with foundations I've owned until this girl came along. So I mentioned in my yearly favorites how I went from having one concealer ever to owning like seven or eight. I decided to like spread out products monthly. The whole month of February, I'm just using Rare Beauty's concealer. And then next month, I'm gonna be using Natasha Denona's concealer. Basically, I'm trying to do this thing where each month I will stick to the same product so I can feel them out. And this month was the Rare Beauty Foundation. So number one, I have never seen patchiness like this. I always hear people talk about patchiness in their foundations. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've never had that problem with anything. So first I was like, okay, maybe their skin's really dry. I have oily skin. 
So I was like, okay, that's probably why it's never happened to me. People saying like, it looks like their foundation is just sitting on top of their skin. And again, I'm like, what does that mean? Your foundation is kind of like going into your skin, melting with your skin. Until I got this, I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks like it's just sitting on top of my face. So I am wearing it, thank God for lights and everything. In person, if you see me, there's like missing patches of the foundation. I tried to add more and like tap it out, but no, for some reason it wasn't clinging to over here. There's a spot over here where the foundation wasn't clinging onto. And I'm like, what? What is that? I've never had that problem before. The whole month I've been using this. I've tried it out with beauty blenders. I've tried it out with my hourglass foundation brush that I've been loving. I've tried it out with different primers when I'm having a good skin day, when I'm having a bad skin day, but each time it gives me that same problem. It's patchy. You can see it sitting on top of your skin. I would even shave, which is the perfect time for me to put on foundation because it's not sitting on top of like those baby hairs. I've tried everything to make her work and every single time it looks horrible. Also, this is my deepest this shade of foundation. When I went to Sephora, I put the House Labs foundation on the back of my hand because that is my closest shade to my skin color. I put on House Labs, I went over to Rare Beauty and I was swatching all the foundations and this was the almost exact shade. This is a little bit more yellow than that one. I tried on like six different shades and this was the closest one to the House Labs. Again, you can't tell, but this is my darkest foundation. I don't know if you can tell because I put my neck like maybe here. Like you can see. Also when I was in Sephora swatching, usually if a Sephora employee asks me if I need help, I say no. But this time I was like, yeah, actually, can you let me know what you think is my foundation shade? So she was trying on and then she was like, this one. And then I was like, right, that's what I thought too. And she's like, oh, just warning, like Rare Beauty's foundation range is very yellow. I could tell she didn't like it. A lot of times like they push the product or they'll be like, oh, this one's better. But I could tell she didn't want to push this product on me. It was kind of like, girl, you shouldn't be getting this. But I did anyways. If you have dry skin, maybe this will look worse on you. Again, I have oily skin. If this instantly already looks bad on my skin when I put it on, I know it's gonna look horrible after like two to three hours. This is my least favorite foundation I've ever used. My next February fail is this Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. When I got this, this was part of the free Sephora birthday deals. And when I first used this, I freaking loved, slash I still love, the wand. Like all my brushes are like a typical brush, like a mascara brush. This was my first time with something like this. And when I was putting it on, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun coming through my brows. But every time, I pulled out, <laughs> there was just a string of stickiness or like a web coming out every time I, I pulled out. <laughs> okay, you see that, right? That is so annoying. Every time I go up to put on the gel, like I have to wait for that web to die down or like move it around. I try to take out as much product as possible kind of wipe it because it's so thick and it's basically hair gel like when it dries down you can see like some white i've never had that problem with an eyebrow gel maybe because i get tinted brow gels but yeah it was just very unenjoyable using this but i stuck to it because i wanted to try him for the full month of february so i would not recommend this at all now i'm on the search for a product that has a brush like this but doesn't give me that stringiness and crusty eyebrows. A Patrick Ta product I do like, which I am wearing is his Major Volume Pumping Gloss. This is in the shade Need Her. This isn't in my favorites and fails. Let me just talk about her for a bit because I'm still debating if I want to keep her or not. I love the applicator. It's really big. I would say number one biggest lip applicator I've used is Summer Fridays, and this is number two. This alone already covers enough for both my lips. Also, I actually like that it's like watermelon bubble gum, and I don't like the smell of bubble gum, but I think since the watermelon's covering the bubble gum smell, like it smells really good. And two, even though I love this, I mentioned in my last video that I like it more than the House Labs because you can actually see pigment and the pigment is covering both my lips. This somehow manages, I feel like I haven't really had this problem with other lip products or like even lip glosses. For some reason, this keeps managing to fall into my mouth for some reason. <laughs> Even when I was putting on my makeup, I like looked in the mirror and like stuck out my tongue and then saw some of this on there. I wiped it off. I was like, oh my gosh, why are you getting like inside my mouth? <laughs> okay, let me put it on. So yeah, this is like in the middle of a favorites and a fail. I just wanted to bring it up while we're here just so I can mention what I'm wearing. Hopefully in the next few minutes, this will not start falling into my mouth. Okay, so my last two products are fails. 
but they're more like I want to talk about them before I throw them away. You know, like I feel like it would be a waste to throw them away without talking about them first, even though they are fails. We have the Eco Tools blender. I tried this purple one, I've tried their green one, and it's so funny how this is on my favorites and fails. That's such an oxymoron, but it is a favorite and a fail. So I've had my same beauty blender, do not like judge me, for I want to say eight years and there was nothing wrong with her. There weren't any tears until my husband needed to start using concealer because he got this big cut on his forehead. So like I taught him how to use concealer and the beauty blender. When he came back from a trip, I was like, babe, why is my beauty blender all scratched up? And he's like, I don't know. I've had that blender for eight years and I was like, you know what, let me switch it up. So this was the sponge I got and I loved it more than the beauty blender. It felt softer. I feel like I maybe talked about in the favorites and all the specifics of why I loved it, but I just know I loved it more than the beauty blender and I still do, but it's so annoying because literally every second or third wash, there would already be some kind of tear. And I'm like, dude, that's not good if you can easily tear and I've only used you twice. I don't even know how that came about. Like, yeah, just when I'm washing, see like stuff, that's usually what happens the second time I wash it. Like little breakages and tears and cuts. Another like, ooh, do not touch it. Even though I love it, it's just not worth having to buy one every few months compared to a beauty blender where it lasts me for years. I had to talk about her before I threw her away. Even though I have so many makeup sponges, the Eco Tools sponges are the only ones I've ever thrown away because they just break so easily like this. And speaking of another thing I wanna talk about before I throw it away is this Sigma E15 flat definer brush. It's crazy because I've never had this problem with any of my other Sigma brushes or my brushes in general. And I'm always scared to use this because I know I could easily like, oh, I felt that, cut my finger on these. So even if this didn't have the problem, I still do not like this brush in itself. I don't like brushes like these in general, like the flat ones. Obviously they're used for your eyeliner, right? I'm trying to think of maybe if you're doing like a liner up here, but I've hated using this to smudge on my eyeliner. It's not really good at smudging, it hurts. Like my eyes always water when I use this cause it's so stiff. And since it's so straight, my eyes aren't straight, they're curved. I don't like these brushes in general. I never saw the purpose for them. I can smudge my eyeliner with anything else. Why does it have to be stiff? Again, let's say you're using it to put eyeliner up here. You can just use an angled brush a winged liner brush. I do not see the purpose for these brushes. Like I said, I just wanted to talk about her one last time before I throw her because I think this is gonna be my first brush I'm ever gonna throw away. I don't know if I wanna give this to anyone, especially with how beat up and chipped she is. It is a fail, even if she didn't have all these problems. I just don't like flat definer brushes. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you're like, oh, thank God she mentioned how horrible that is because now I don't wanna touch those products. And the favorites were like obsessions. They weren't like, oh, so cutesy, like, oh, that's my favorite. No, like I'm obsessed with those three and then intensely dislike the fails. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Oh wait, you know what was my favorite? Favorite, oh my gosh, I can't say this is February because it was on March 1st. March 1st should technically be in February. Let's count this as a February favorite and it is my most favorite out of all of these. And it's not makeup, it's the new Dune, Dune 2. I don't know if you see this on TikTok, but nonstop, my husband being getting TikToks like, oh my gosh, Dune 2 is like the best movie. It's better than The Empire Strikes Back. Like people just obsessed with it. My husband likes the first Dune. The first Dune like was so boring for me. And I was like, how, how can anyone like the second one? Cause usually the second and third movies aren't as good as the originals. And then there was a point where my husband was like, okay, I can't tell if they're just joking and this is satire and they're just making fun of other TikTokers saying this is the best movie, holy crap, mind blown. And then we watched it and I was just like, oh, oh my gosh. I even apologized to my husband throughout the movie. Like I think 10 minutes in or when I call him Shemalamale, <laughs> when Shemalamale and Zendaya were running, trying to like get away from being shot at. I, I, I looked at my husband and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. And I could see his little smirk, like I, I told you so. And there's so many times throughout the movie where I would just look over at him and be like, I bashed that movie so hard. My husband was even like, you should make a TikTok of how hard you're bashing, dude. Dune 2, mind blowing. Oh my God, that was very cinematic. Oh my gosh, I hate to be like one of those people who say this, like cinematic masterpiece. And we watched it in Dolby. If you go watch it, watch it in Dolby or IMAX because that was a whole experience. So yeah. 
hands down, let's pretend March 1st was part of February. Dune 2 would have been my favorite of all month. I'm going back in a few days to watch it again with a friend and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go back like two more times to watch it in theater. But yeah, the hype is real. Seriously, go watch it. Okay, I'm done. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.